Hello, this is Dr. Will Clower, and welcome to the Chocolate Book Club here at Fitbee, where I'm very excited to continue the series because, as you remember last week, what we talked about is using chocolate to pull your sweet tooth and how to do that, how to create the cravings internally that work for you, not against you. And you do it eating the chocolate. Uh -huh. Bonus. It's awesome. This week, we're going to talk about something else that is just a, what one editor told me is a disease. I read this morning that incidents of autism, a disease, have uh, increased. There's lots of that kind of thing. But the, the disease that this particular editor is talking about is she, in her terms, the disease of overconsumption. It's everywhere. People eat huge. Have you ever watched people go to a restaurant? Man, the volume that they eat at the plate is amazing. You order something normal, some chicken Azteca, right? They bring it out in a forklift. They serve it in a trough, and people eat the... It's huge because we, we are coached to consume that much food. And it's not just the food at the plate either. It's all the, all the, all the time between meals. Think about it. What is our... You guys, you guys... Type it into the chat space. What is the, the what is our biggest fad right now? Eat every three hours. You need to eat many lots of meals all the time. Like, who does that make sense to? Does that make sense to you? Let's just say that you had a bunch of people who were talking and, and wanted to coach you an entire culture to eat well, to lose weight. And they were sitting in this room. They're sitting in the room and they were going. Man, we got a we got massive weight problems. What are we going to do? I got an idea. Let's coach them to eat more often. That'll work. <laughs> you know, who does that make sense to? I don't even get that. The theory behind it doesn't even make sense. If you guys have questions about that mini meal thing, just ask me and I'll go over it. Bottom line is that idea of having to eat all the, all the, all the time is ineffective. Uh, comment from Beth. I was told to eat often to regulate blood sugar. Right. That's what you were told. You were told that if, if you don't eat all the time every so often, then you're going to have, uh, your body's going to have a crash. And then you're going to be hungry. And that's the reason why you need to eat all the time. And I think about the times when uh, our culture, us as a people, were healthy. Like 1958. 1958, our obesity rate was 12. 12. Can you imagine going out there into this world and seeing a 12% obesity rate? Unbelievable. When we were thin, when we were healthy back then, when were we eating? Beth, that was your question. Answer the question. How often did we eat then? Were we eating every three, did we have to eat every three hours so that our blood sugar didn't crash or whatever? The answer to that little riddle is no. As a matter of fact, the idea that you can't make it all the way from lunch to dinner has n uh, no basis in reality, actually. No healthy culture on this earth has to eat all the, all the, all the time. Just us, people with the problem. So, uh, the comment is, chocolate eaten, re chocolate eaten regulates, seems to do the same. We ate at mealtimes. Exactly. That's when we ate our food. We ate at mealtimes. So, we kind of need to remember what we've forgotten. And in order to do that and use chocolate to do it, what I need you to do is to think a little bit different. I need you to come at it from a different way of thinking. It's kind of a different dietary philosophy, actually. And this is, this is the philosophy that you'll read in Eat Chocolate, Lose Weight. It, in order to get there, I have to tell you a story, and I want you to be with me because it's coming back to chocolate and controlling consumption using chocolate. But i got to tell you a story first. Okay, Once upon a time, about 5,000 years ago, Two of the most influential people the planet has produced lived at exactly the same time. 
One of them was named Confucius. You know him from fortune cookies. Confucius say blah, 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 blah. The other guy was named uh, Lao Tzu, and he was the founder of the idea of Taoism. You probably heard about, you probably heard of that as well. Confucianism and Taoism evolved at the same time out of a China that was a mess, man. At the time, it was a mess. It was like rampant corruption and crime and everything. And these guys had ways of approaching their, uh, their the ideas of approaching the problem that were completely different. Confucius was from the Justice Department. He was a police guy. He was about the rules. So what he did was he created reams and reams of rules and rules for every single behavior. He said, look, we got a problem. We need more rules. People follow the rules, external rules. Do as you're told. That'll fix it. Lao Tzu, the guy who started Taoism, said that's exactly wrong. The human person has enough understanding in themselves, principles of behavior, that can guide behavior. You just need to remember that. People are by nature social. They are by nature, um, they are by nature kind. They are by nature people who want to live well in a social circumstance. But you have to put them in touch with those principles of behavior that are innate to them already. What does this have to do with diet? Think about, so we have these two different, completely opposite ways of approaching things. One is all about setting external rules and making sure people follow those rules. It's not about themselves, it's about them just following the rules. In the other case, it's the, the approach is all about understanding yourself more. Know thyself. With diet, you tell me, type it in. Which approach are we coaching people on? Which one of those two? Think about it. We're, right now, we tell people that they have to have uh, 30% of their calories by fat based on a 2,000 calorie per day diet, but not this kind of saturation to your fatty acid chains. It needs to be the monounsaturated, not the saturated, and you need to have it at this time of the day, but not that time of the day, and you need to have this sort of thing before you have that sort of thing, and it's just bewildering. The reams and reams of rules and rules. We are approaching our diet for people in an, a, a very Confucian sort of way. In other words, here are all the things. You just do that, and that will control your portions for you. You eat until there's 2,000 calories, then you stop. Or, you, how much is a portion? Oh, it's a deck of cards. Nope, it's a racquetball. Nope, it's this. Nope, it's that. They specify every, every, everything for us. It's an external rule that regulates carbs and fats and points and proteins. That's what it does. An opposite approach, something that I would like to coach you to, to do and to explore, is the Taoist approach. Now, in, in Eat Chocolate, I, I talk about this. This is in Chapter 4. You know, I... I I spoke to this woman, she's from the University of San Francisco, um, California, San Francisco, and she is a Taoist professor, but she's also a foodie, and I talked to her about diet, and so, you know, every week I have to read something from this book, and so I, I wanted to read you what she wrote to me, because I read it, and I went, that is so perfect. Listen to this, old man glasses. She wrote back and she said, we, we are originally and naturally designed to know how to nourish ourselves. That's in the Tao, the, the way, already. So we just need to let go of our junk knowledge along with the junk food and the junk nutrition advice and the junk diet and return to our original nature. We have all the power in us to recover that because it's already there. We just have to trust ourselves. That is Taoist empowerment. You are whole. You are sufficient. 
You are complete. It's in there. Just like I told you, we as a culture need to remem remember who we are. Remember what we've forgotten. We as people, as individuals, need to rediscover ourselves. Understand our own cravings and the things that are driving our cravings. In the end, when you do that, and you do that with chocolate, when you do that, you can eat all you want. You just want less. Eat all you want. But your body will self-regulate because the knowledge, the, the, the mechanisms are in place to control consumption for you so that consumption becomes self-limiting. That sounds a little airy-fairy. I mean, I'm a scientist, right? I hear that. I hear airy-fairy when it comes out of my mouth. However, after working with tens of thousands of people, what I've seen is that when they understand their cravings, like their sweet tooth, when they understand the, the way that their body works and interacts with hunger and satiety, the amount that they're hungry for at the plate, this is you. The amount you're hungry for at the plate drops by about one-half to one-third. The data's in the book. The amount you're hungry for between meals is cut in half. People eat all they want. They just want less. They want an amount that's appropriate. You know what? And that knowledge, it comes from inside you. Inside the body dynamic, you are sufficient. You are whole not from somebody else's reams and reams of rules and rules telling you what you need to do and how many grams or ounces or microbes you need to put in your mouth. I'm not saying that those approaches won't work. They can work. Of course they can work. However, as, as, as people, it's really hard to make that work in a real world. In your life. You got 32 balls in the air. How are you supposed to remember how many carbs are in your mashed potatoes? Who can do that? That's why people fail. Find the knowledge in yourself. We're going to do that. And we're going to do it using chocolate. Chocolate is a perfect, perfect tool to do that. So, what I want you to do is this. What we talked about in week one of this series is that if you, if you want more chocolate, you can have it, but you have to have more cocoa in it. You need to think about it like a cocoa delivery device. So if you have 70% or above, you can have eight of these little pieces in a day. And remember, a piece is defined as about the size of the end joint of your thumb. Just this little thing. Eight of them. Two before your lunch, two after your lunch, two before your dinner, two after your dinner. The one before is called the starter because it starts your dinner. <laughs> the one after is called the ender. Here's what happens, and this is what I want you to do. This is your homework. I want you to take these two pieces of 70% and above, and the darker ones work better. And I want you to have one, and I want you to put it into your mouth, maybe, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes beforehand, half an hour-ish, doesn't matter, honestly, truly, just some time, about a half an hour beforehand. Put it into your mouth, keep it on your palate, and let it work. Let it let go of itself so that you taste it more and more and more and more. When you're done, get some water, get some whatever tea, wine, whatever you have. Rinse, rinse your mouth out and have another one. Two before, that's your starter. Now, your homework is this. When you do this, I want you to focus on flavor. Focus on taste. Then, when you have your dinner or your lunch, I want you to do the same thing. Use that same behavioral habit with your food. And then come back here next week and tell me how much you were hungry for. Do you fit into the pattern of all of the people that I've seen on this program? Where the amount they're hungry for drops by a half to a third, you eat all you want? People come back to me and they'll say, Dr. Clower, it's amazing. I'm, I'm, I just don't eat that. I'm just not hungry because I'm satisfied and I'm not stuffed because they're eating in this way. Because when you do that, you essentially train yourself to listen for the signals that go to your brain and say, I'm full, before you overrun them 
because you're trying to fit somebody else's arbitrary rules about how many carbs you should be having. Did that make sense? That helps you control portions at the plate. Portion distortion goes away. Make sense? The other thing that I want you to try, to, this is your homework. You have homework, man. I have tough homework. Eat the chocolate. <laughs> but, but eat it in control, obviously. After your lunch, after your dinner, then you have your ender. And again, two pieces. Darker is better, darker is better, darker is better. And then you have them. They need to be 70 or, or, or above. Then you do the very same thing. Give it a few minutes. Give it five minutes. Then have a piece and love on it. Take your time with it. Taste it. Be all about it. When you do that, there's a couple of neural reflexes that kick in because it's in there to control consumption. It's in you to control consumption. But you have to listen. The neural reflexes kick in, that, and that's because of the, the bitterness that's in here. The, the bitter flavor that's in the chocolate helps to curtail cravings over a period of three to four hours. Those are data. But when you apply the ender in this way, just like you did the starter, but it's about you know five, 10 minutes after the uh, meal-ish, what ends up happening is that the amount you're hungry for between meals, that, that time after your lunch, after your dinner, it just, you're not craving. It goes away. And it's not because you counted up how many carbs or fats or points or proteins you needed. None of that matters. You did it. It wasn't somebody else's external structure applied onto you that made it happen. This, my friends, is how to live a life of living well. This is how to do it for yourself. And how do you do it? How do you control consumption? How do you eat all you want but just want less? You know thyself. You understand yourself. You listen to the signals as they come. You taste your food. And you can do, uh, and I need you to use chocolate to do that. Does that make sense? Do you guys have questions? If you have questions, please type in. The advanced course, you guys, is for you to do what I call sensual eating. Sensual eating is the same. Pay attention to your senses. Did you know this? These are your data. If you, when you do your starter, when you do your ender, if you simply smell your chocolate beforehand, they did this study with um, uh, women, a bunch of women, and what they did was they, uh, they had a baseline to know about how much they typically eat of chocolate. And they asked them to very simply smell the chocolate before a, an experimental session. And what they found was that just smelling the chocolate beforehand cut down how much they were hungry for. Smelling. Being sensual, paying attention to your senses around your chocolate. So, when you apply, this is your homework, when you apply your starter and your ender, I want you to notice the flavor, the texture, and the uh, aroma of your chocolate as you eat it. Fair enough? Now, advanced course. For the advanced course, what I want you to do is to and this is in the book that's, uh, by this time we're at chapter five. What I want you to do is to get two different kinds of chocolate. Now the one on this side, with this is the leaf and this is the uh, cocoa bean. They're both, when you do this, sensual eating practice, I want you to get two kinds of chocolate that are of the same cocoa percentage. So it's got the same basic amount of sugar, same basic amount of cocoa, but two different kinds. I was at a talk the other day and somebody said, why is why are chocolates becoming so expensive? And the reason why, you know why? Because they're so popular now. And now you're seeing all kinds of chocolates. Dark chocolates, it's everywhere. How are you supposed to know which one you like? Well, what you do is you taste test them side by side. And when you do that, just make sure that the cocoa percentage is the same. This is called a horizontal taste 
test. There's a great deal of detail in how to do it in the book, but the bottom line, the basic element is to set these two next to each other and taste them and think about what does the sweet component taste like? What does the savory component, because they're in there, what does the uh, tannic flavor taste like? And then, when you're done with that one, rinse your mouth, take the other one. When you do that side by side, you start to notice differences that you've never seen before. We as a culture need to remember what we forgot, who we are. You as a person need to understand, we as people need to understand ourselves and who we are. At every level, you know, think about your chocolate. The reason why people don't know which one to, to taste is because they've never really tasted them. They would chew, swallow, chew, swallow, chew, swallow till it's gone. When you do this, when you do this sens sensual practice of smelling and tasting and thinking about the flavors, then you start to understand the chocolates better, to know which one is better for you, which ones you like better, which ones that you're drawn to. In the end, what happens? In the end, when you do this, you develop, you unmask, you reveal your ability to taste, your ability to not be bludgeoned by the food choices that we're faced with every day. Practicing sensual eating practice is training for your palate so that the things that you have a craving for are healthier items. Again, you're sculpting your cravings from the inside out, not because somebody set some set of rules for you to follow. This is a Taoist approach. This is a way to change who you are, to understand who you are, so that that works for you, for your weight and your health. Did that make sense? Comment. Calorie counters are rule followers. That is exactly right. Another comment, like uh, things that go with chocolate include things like red wine and cheeses. That's exactly right. Some of them work, but some of them don't. But how would you know? How you know is you try them. Give it a shot. Make sure that, that the chocolate that you're, you're doing this with is, um, uh, is a good quality chocolate. It's not like schlocky chocolate where they put in other oils in there and you put it in your mouth and it tastes waxy. Not like that. I have to say, you guys, I um, I have this chocolate. I, I got it from some store, and it's sea salt dark chocolate. from uh, The brand is, here it is, I'll show you. The brand is Theo. I've tried salted chocolate before and just didn't like it. I tried this. It is so subtle background. It's am This is amazing. I tasted this. 70% next to another 70% and it was night and day but I never would have known that had I not tasted it had I not tried it so that's your homework for today for this week what I want you to do is to practice being a conscious eater practice being a sensual eater so when you consume you start training your own tastes from the inside out. We need to move away from this model that we've been coached into forever, the one that has failed and then failed and then failed. It doesn't work. I mean, it can work. It absolutely can. But in the real world, in the, in, in the main, it just doesn't because you can't keep up with it all the time. Make sense? All right. Well, listen, guys. Are there any questions for me? before we go? Any questions about uh, what to eat, when you should do it, how, how to do it, how to sculpt your own cravings and, and control consumption using chocolate? Questions? All good? If you guys have questions for me, just type it into the chat space. No, all good. Got it. Excellent. 
Excellent. All right, you guys. Well, listen. Have a wonderful week. We have one more week left in the series. It's going to be about exercise and how to incorporate chocolate so that the activity that you have and the energy that you have is increased. And again, all that's in the Eat Chocolate, Lose Weight book. Good? All right. Huge love, you guys. You guys take care and have a wonderful week. I'll talk to you next week. Bye-bye.